So I, I, I cannot say that. Critical mention is something that, just like LexisNexis or something like that, I don't use my username and password often, but if there's a record, I have several different databases as the business record custodian. If I have access to it, I can pull. So but you didn't have access to it, right? I can get asked. I think you and I discuss as it relates to the employment manual, right? And then you made re re a reference, and you did very, did very well saying, hey, every uh, investigators and attorneys, they have phones and text messages. So you brought that up. Then I said, hey, yeah, if they have it, I can have access to it, right? So the answer to your question is yes. If there is a system as the business records custodian and pursuant to the employee manual that you introduced to this court, Yes, I can have access to it. So if someone had the critical mention software or app on their computer or their phone and they were running reports, you would be able to access that information and provide that in response to an open records request? Not to your open records request. Because on January 1st, 2021 to 2024, or whenever you requested this analytics. One, I did not know what you were talking about, right? And then two, the critical mention did not exist. So no one on my staff right now can go into critical mention and provide any data because critical mention does not, we, we do not have critical mention. So no, I cannot provi could not provide you at the time the open records were received responsive documents that you see, nor can anybody else in my office. Uh, what, I, if I could, what I could do is look at, like you gave me for subpoena number two, which is more specific to your first two open records requests, I can use those particular search terms, and then I can give it to the Fulton County IT department who has the ability to reach, well, reach and try to find out information, which I did, right? Um, and then which I provided to you, I think you believe you reference it as the 197. So that's what I could do, but I cannot go into critical mention. Neither myself, let me be very clear, or any other employee go into critical mention to pull anything. Right, the people who actually had access to that at the time, those are the people that would have to pull that. So, I think that you and I can agree uh, that open records are, do that records exist at the time that open records were received. We made a lot of mention here that the first critical mention open records request came in January 8th, 2024. I think you and I can agree that on January 8th, 2024, we did not have critical mention. Based on the renewals that you showed me, we did not have an existing contract. So my position is neither myself or anyone with a login. The login is irrelevant. You could not get it because at the time your open records were received in January 2024, both of them, we did not have critical mention. The law that we agreed earlier that, that you have to follow says that all records created or received in the performance of duty and paid for by public funds are deemed to be public property and shall constitute a record of public acts. Would you agree that reports paid for by public funds would be a record of public acts? and public property. I cannot answer that based on the framing of your question. I'm afraid it's misleading. Can I respond? My response is critical mention is something that is a database. Maybe we can educate on critical mention. Critical mention is a system that you can, an app as you say, and that you can go in to get stuff, right? We use it for investigative purposes if there is a, uh, for, for various different reasons. For, because HR is under me, I use it for morale. If, my, if one of my employees do something great and someone reports to that, I want to be able to let my team know, hey, this is what we're doing in the DA's office. That's how it is being used. Now, what I need you to understand is once that system is gone, that contract is gone, I cannot maintain, reserve, preserve. The system is gone. So. I hear you as it relates to your assertion, as, as it relates to the retention uh, act, but I need you to understand that this act, this app, excuse me, this app is somewhat, it, it's not a file that I will have in my office that I will have to maintain with the retention act. Am, am I clear on that? Yes, you have okay. to actually actively want to maintain it to maintain it. You have to print it and actively want, like, do something to try and maintain it, right? 
You have to want to make it. You have to, it's an app, and if you want the reports to be re re retained, you have to download them, or you have to print them. You have to somehow do some act to make them be retained, correct? I mean, I can go with that particular argument. Okay. If, if there's an, if, if, but you have to also understand, just like any private company, and I think that you've seen in one of those emails, the 197 emails, that they're always saying, hey, Look, look what critical mention can do. Hey, look what, you, you know. It, so it's one of those things that I don't think that you, I'll just show my age a little bit. As it relates to, I'm not going to an app Instagram to print to retain. It's not one of those systems. I think that the court needs to be educated on what kind of system it is if you're going to implicate or try to infer that we was responsible for maintaining anything in that database under the Retention Act. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna let you make that correlation. But you were never the person who actually went in and did the reports and stuff. That, that was other folks. That wasn't your job. Oh, yeah. I have staff that can do things like that. I don't. Okay. And the people that had the, the records would be Jeff DeSantis, Fonnie Willis, and Robin Bryant. Here. No, that's not true. Who else had passwords to critical uh, Jeff DeSantis had a password. Uh, I do uh, I recall Robin, who's no longer with our office, had a password. I believe that password was sent to uh, someone else. But I can assure you right now that uh, District Attorney Fonny D. Willis did not have a password. She can't work a printer. So that, that's not her. That's not her gift. She's blessed at a lot of things, but she would not have a password for that. But undisputably not you, and, and definitely Jeff DeSantis does. Yeah. That, yeah, I, I would think that Jeff DeSantis would have a password, and undisputably not me, and undisputably not District Attorney Fonny T. Willis. Um, I'm going to move on to the confidentiality agreements. Okay. So we have another open records request, um, and we've got it up ready for you. It's at Merchant 0345. Would you agree that on January 9th, I requested any and all documents um, that employee staff or independent contractors, and I include agreements, um, are required to sign regarding speaking to the media and or confidentiality. Would you agree that I made that request? January 9th, 2024, yes, she did make that request. And that request was clear and concise, correct? Uh, not necessarily concise, and I can explain why, but uh, based on this reading, uh, it, I understand. Okay. I understand the open records request. My interpretation of this was that she was looking for uh, statements that exclude people from talking to the media. Um, it clearly says confidentiality on this document, is that correct? It does, yes. Um, so would you agree that that is clear and concise as far as confidentiality agreements? Uh, as it relates to speaking to the media and or confidentiality, just looking at this, I would agree that this is clear and concise, just looking at this. And it was submitted through the Fulton County Open Records Portal? That's correct. And it was received, it shows it was received the same day, January 9th, that's the return with the tracking number, so that's proof that it was received, correct? Uh, that is proof that it was received by our office and we acknowledged it via the Open Records Act, yes. And then on January 18th, it looks like I got a response that said to please allow for 10 business days for a response, correct? That's pretty standard, yes. Okay. So would you agree that within the three days of my um, filing this Open Records request, I did not get anything that said whether responsive records exist, correct? Based on this, uh, you got an acknowledgement of we received it and you got an R. So I don't know. Outside of this, I, don't, I would have to agree with you that you did not receive whether or not responsive records exist in that three days' time. So I would agree with you. Okay. And I didn't get anything that says whether, when they will be made available or whether they will be made available, correct? On, if you could scroll down, I can tell you exactly what you did receive. Oh, no, go back up to the request. Yeah, that's it. And if you go down to... I asked within three days, so you can definitely... So well, for January 9th, this is what you receive. Thank you for sending your open records request. Here's your tracking number. Here's your description of records. So, and, and going up on January 18th, that's when I received a response that said, please allow 10 business days, correct? That's when you received a, rep a response through the portal. I do know that you and I, as well as my staff, exchange emails. I cannot tell you if you received a response anywhere between January 9th and January 18th. But just off this record, you receive the response on January 18th. Please allow 10 business days for response. And while you mentioned that, your staff um, would email me for clarification if they thought anything was confusing, right? I, my staff is instructed 
to if, uh, if you get an open records request and it's simple, go ahead and handle it, right? And I think you and I can agree on what is simple. My staff also knows we have routine checkups when anything that's elevated come to me and let's discuss. Uh, I do have competent people in my staff who sometimes will reach out to people to uh, uh, ask for clarification. I do have that. Um, and so the letter that was attached, if you can go back down, go down to um, the next page, it's merchant um, 0346. That's the letter that I received in response, correct? Once your request has been reviewed, this is a pretty standard letter. I would say that you receive that. Okay. And so this was received nine days after I made that open records request, correct? If this letter is that is consistent with the January 18th, the answer is yes. And um, this is from your office, right? Uh, it is from and stop open records, although, uh, as you can see in the headline, who it is, but you know it's from open records. You do know that, right? I'm trying to differentiate between the county attorney's office, which we've received some letters, and your office. This is from your office, correct? Yes, because it has my um, office's letterhead. Great. Yeah, if I could ask for a point of clarification on that. There was another letter we saw earlier, it's the one that related to the um, cyber attack, cyber attack um, that I, it appeared to be on Ms. Miller's letterhead. The, the signature line said open records team. Yes. Is that distinct from your signature line of open records? Uh, yes, and let me explain. And this is what I was trying to get to. Um, the county attorney decided, hey, everybody that's involved in the portal need to use this standard letter for cyber attack. So that particular letter, as it relates to cyber attack, we were supposed to go and say to all our requesters, he is a cyber attack. Right, no, that, that's fair. And, and But actually, my question is broader than that. It's not about that particular letter. It's about um, is... Ms. Miller and her open records team the same as Mr. Bond and his open records? The answer is no. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Um, and so after I received this letter, let's see, um, is this, can you scroll down a second? Is this 4-6? Um, yes, okay. Um, I followed up with a letter, the letter that we talked about earlier, um, the January 24th letter, I sent that to, to your office. The January 24th letter came. At that time, like you said, there were several different things that was elevated to me, because at this time, this wasn't elevated to me. Um, it was interpreted to me at that time of that letter that you wanted request, I mean, any uh, documents that prevented staff or independent contracts from speaking to the media. Okay. Let's, um, if you can scroll. We'll be on the next page. And this is the same, that's the same follow-up letter, though, that I included. I included essentially all of my requests, correct? I, the ones that were outstanding. It's more than 12, so I don't know if you said all. Oh, earlier you said it'd be surprised 12, you remember? This looks like more than 12, so I don't know if it's all. That's something that you can clear up for the record. You remember I said 40, you said 12, this looked like in between. So I can't tell you if it's all. Number five. On here, if you look at the top, is about confidentiality or non-disclosure agreements, correct? Yes. And here again, I'm asking for confidentiality agreements. Yes, agree? if we all, I would agree. I will also get say, let's look at the context. Let's read it. It says, district attorney required to sign regarding speaking to the media. To your point, and or confidentiality. So yes, I said signing speaking to the media, to which I responded, let's be very clear, so you go on, I have no responsive records to any of my staff speaking to the media. That's how I responded. Can you pull up the um, employee manual page down? Page, um, the employee manual, there's six or two. Thank you. 
Um, the employee manual actually contains revision. The, let's see if we can get it up here for you, but it actually may, has a provision about talking to the media, correct? No employee is permitted to talk to the media. I believe I'm, I'm referencing. Okay. And that's in that's in the employee manual, though, correct? It should be. You can show me, but I'm almost certain because no employee should be talking to the media. So, if if you interpreted that request to mean you can't talk to the media, you didn't provide this in response, though, correct? This wouldn't be responsive to your. You asked for. Let's go back to your open records request because our in this is the two like minds were different. We learned that in uh, law school, right? Look at your open records request. You're looking for agreement signed by staff. This is an employee manual that says you are not to speak to the media. In my professional opinion, based on my years of experience, the employee manual will not be responsive to your request. So the answer to your question is no. I didn't provide it. Um, and so in that letter, you didn't provide the confidentiality agreements. You didn't provide any of those, correct? No, you're right about that. And I did not provide confidentiality agreements. The way that it was presented to me was the media. I knew I did not have responsive records after talking to counsel, right? Let's be very clear. In your subpoena. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not asking anything about the subpoena. I don't want to confuse the issues. Gotcha. I'm only talking about the open records. Okay. We are still in January. I got you. So as it relates to open records, I interpret this as you do not talk to the media. To which I responded, you're right. I do not have responsive documents as it relates to making my employees sign an agreement that says you cannot talk to the media. Can you put, um... And that happened in January, that is correct. So go back up to the, the open records request, the actual wording. So I asked for documents, agreements, contracts, memos, or any written documents um, and that anyone's been required to sign regarding confidentiality. So we it says media and confidentiality. Just hold I on. agree. I agree with you. So in response to this, you did not provide any confidentiality agreements, correct? The answer is. Agree to sign, so you know our employees and that don't have to sign an employee manual. So we know that. So we know that that's not responsive. As it relates to the media, I'm agreeing with you, right? You ask for, I interpret this in my staff, you want media agreements. I responded and said, I do not have responsive documents, right? After this particular litigation in preparation for this hearing, at that moment, it was confidentiality agreements, right? And at that moment, I believe as we sit here before, they have been provided to you. So, they were provided me two days ago, correct? I cannot tell you when it was provided to you, um, but I do know that you have them because once I've been informed, hey, this, if, if I can, this particular has been a moving target. The first one, not perfect. I interpret it as media. Once I said it's media, it's non responsive. Later on, it was interpreted as, forgive me, Jeff DeSantis made comments to the media saying that these agreements were destroyed. To which I said, I don't have any responsive records. And then at that moment, it then turned to, is that you? And then it turned to, to this most recent, I think, subpoena, was just pure confidentiality agreements. So yes, I agree. You narrowed it down to confidentiality agreements, and you got confidentiality agreements. My interpretation is that on the onset, was media. Based on context that you provided, hey, the DA's office had some stuff, they destroyed some stuff, which I did not have that. And now confidentiality agreements I have. If I have it, you have it. There's no... In January, in response to my I did not give you any request, confidentiality agreements. You did not give me any confidentiality agreements. In your letter in January, when we said, we're going to have to file a lawsuit to get these if you don't give them to us, you responded. You do not maintain responsive records and cannot produce the records we seek, correct? That is exactly, because I was afraid. I thought that the scope of that was the media. You're absolutely right. And you actually provided a custodian affidavit with a confidentiality agreement signed by Nathan Wade in his divorce proceeding, correct? You have to show me. His, um, Nathan Wade's, uh, or his business records. If you don't remember that, I'll get it for you. 
I was a business record custodian of a thousand files per year. I, I don't remember that particular one, but it's um, Merchant agreement not uh, agreement to speak to the media as I just told you wish I was perfect I am not when I got your open records request I thought it was exclusively you cannot talk to the media based on context that you provided context I provided can you put my original open records request back up not via the open records I'm sorry context you provided you're going to the open records I am not scoped to the uh, open records act. I'm saying context that you provided, because you did provide. Right, but I'm we're, we're not, gonna it's, put it up. And you can show me where. But I'm telling you it's not in the open records act. In one of your- So there's no context in this? Is that what you're saying? Only context is required to sign regarding speaking to the media. Uh, and there's nothing in my letter where I said, if you don't give me these, we're gonna have to follow suit. There's nothing that provided anything different than this, correct? That's not true. Not in, in that letter on January 24th? In regards to the confidentiality. I do not believe that, but there has been comments, there has been emails, right? It's, it's not. No. I'm sorry? On January 24th, you did not make any mention, uh, you did not provide additional context as it relates to the speaking to the media on January 24th. Okay. So when we had to file the lawsuit in the open records case here, you had not provided any confidentiality agreements in response to this original open records request. The answer is no. As I thought that your request was limited to the media, so no, I did not have that. Would you agree that the um, 22 documents that were provided recently, within the past week, would be responsive clearly to this front I agree. It is uh, for as relates to confidentiality. If it was presented to me as hey, this uh, we're looking for media and or confidentiality, I would have gave you those. Uh, but again, I interpret it. My let me take responsibility. I interpret it as uh, a NDA, a non-disclosure. I discuss that because I interpret it as a, a not to stick to me. And. Um, in regards to this confidentiality request, did you perform any searches in response to this open records request? Uh, this is an example of I will go to uh, my investigative team. Do you have any? Do these exist? So, and in response to this, you went to your investigator team and asked if any of them existed. Not in response to this. Let's be very clear. What did you do in response to this? I interpret this as the media. I know that as a business record custodian, as a deputy of operations, I know that we do not have any request related to employees in any signed forms saying that you cannot speak to the media. I know that to be certain. So I did not do anything as it relates to this open records request based on my interpretation. And my interpretation is because it required signing regarding speaking to the media. So let, let me be very clear. For that open records request, I did not do anything because I read it as required signing regarding speaking to the media. But you personally thought this, this was elevated to you for some reason. This was elevated to me, and when it was elevated to me, it was presented to uh, Mrs. Merchant want uh, uh, media statements. Do they exist? No, they do not exist. To which I responded to your open records request, they do not exist. Were all of my records requests after um, January 18th, were all of those elevated to you? No, I, I don't. You have, again, we disagree on a number. We know we there's a lot. Um, if you And you have asked for my office back from September, a lot of standard things, all of which we responded to in a timely manner. I hope you can agree to that. So I don't see all of your requests. Did you sign a confidentiality agreement? No. You've never, signed, so. you've never signed one? I don't think so. You don't remember? Uh, I don't remember. I don't think so. I do not think so. Do you believe that only 22 employees of the district attorney's office have been required to sign a confidentiality agreement? I don't have no belief. I don't have a position in that. I know my staff, 
I can speak for my staff, no. And what I think I gave you were, uh, from the I'm sorry, you think you gave No, I, I can speak for me. I don't believe I signed one. I know that my staff, my direct reports, I don't, they have not signed one. Your direct reports have not? My, as it relates to my direct team, I don't, I did not administer, I did not facilitate the signing of those particular documents. So I cannot speak to that. Um, so at this point, the 22 that we've received, I heard testimony of 150 lawyers, 300 or something staff. Is it your testimony that in response, and we now don't have any semantics confusion, right? Like it's, it's confidentiality agreement. Is it your testimony that only 22 confidentiality agreements exist from Fonnie Willis as the district attorney's term? Based on my research and based on me asking around about confidentiality agreements, I provided that. All right, let's uh, talk about your research then. Okay. What did you do to respond to this request? Uh, security team, do you, do we sign confidentiality agreements? What do this is? Uh, executive assistant, do you have uh, confidentiality agreements? Um, chief of staff, do we have confidentiality agreements? Oh, we do. Who? Why? Okay get these, let me give these to the council. So that is a standard, you know, uh, when you get a request, hey, I'm looking for confidentiality agreements, I think that you can uh, respect the fact that, hey, do we have them? Do we have them? Let me show due diligence. Do you have them? Do we do them? Do we have them? So, so you did not do that in January, you did that recently? That's correct, because in January, as I stated, I thought it was limited to the media. I know media doesn't exist, so I did not very clearly do it in January. I did not. And in response, you asked the security team, the executive executive administration, and the chief of staff if they had any um, of these non-disclosed. Hey, uh, remind me, hey, th these was maybe done four years ago. Is this something we did? Do we have them? Who have them? Do, are they making So yes. What I'm trying to understand is if you're saying, swearing under oath, that 22 are the only 22 that exist. I, I cannot tell you that. You have I can tell you. You're a right, for this office? So I can't. But I can tell you what I did. When I got this, when counsel presented to me and said, hey, media, let's go, instead of looking at it from a narrow scope for media, let's look at it from a confidentiality agreement. Dexter Bond is the business record custodian. What did you do? And I'm answering the question as of what do I do? Now you are looking at my efforts at what I did, and you're trying to conclude that my efforts yielded to a totality of results. And I cannot, get, I cannot confirm that. I can tell you what I did in good faith. Did you send out an email to all staff saying, who has signed a confidentiality agreement? Please respond. It's oh, not impressive. No. Did you send it out to all supervisors? No. Did you send it out to all attorneys? No. Did you send it out to anybody? I'm not, I'm not sure if I sent an email. I don't know. I made some calls. And I had my team make the calls. So I, don't, I don't know. But I know only a handful of people can do RDA. I can tell you that right now. So I know that. You I, can now, right? You still want to? You can. Oh, I can. So if you wanted to, you could send that out. If I wanted to, I wouldn't have. Yeah, if I wanted to. So, uh, but, but also, if I wanted to, yes, let me tell you why I wouldn't, though. Um, <laughs> I think you can respect that I get probably 500 to 1,000, maybe 1,500 emails a day. There's no way that I would have sent an RDA email and ex I would have had to transport, hey, put this in this portal, so I would not have done that. So how did you get the 22 that you that you gave us. I think I answered that question. I told you I called the chief. I, I, I answered that question. Asked how you got them. Like, literally how you got Um, I believe they were scanned to me. Who scanned to me? It was, was scanned to me. King Daddy. I signed this. I'm sorry? I, I, as the book, I signed it to someone. Oh, you was, who did you assign it to? Uh, probably my team. Hey, I need to do this. Can you take the steps? Uh, in a staff meeting, someone took, I, I cannot tell you who specifically did it, and I made some calls, that's why I know I had an email, do we have this, do they exist, is this familiar, um, and that's what I did. So you asked some staff, and you don't know who that staff person is, to make some calls to see if these exist? So, when we in a staff meeting on Tuesdays, right, I have uh, several different people that sit around the room, right, uh, and then I would say, hey, these are outstanding issues, this is my elevation time. Like if there's an issue, let's elevate this. And hey, you need these things for open records? Hey, can you take the lead on this? Take the lead on this, take the lead on this. Report back to me on Thursday as it relates to what we did, how we did. In the meantime, I'll make some calls. 
to figure out where we are. So that, that's my routine practice on open records. And that request was done roughly within the last two weeks? Oh yeah, that, that fairly recently, because again, when I first got the request, I thought it was related to the media. Um, as my student counsel said, hey, let's look at confidentiality agreement and let's make it a little more, more broad. I followed those instructions and I did, and I told you what I did. Um, is there any way that I could have been more specific without using the terms actual confidentiality and agreement? If I could, to be honest with you, no. Now, because this was elevated to me, I wish that this was a request that I would have read myself and not allow it to be paraphrased to me because I thought that this was required to, regarding speaking to the media. I looked, I blamed it, okay, speaking to the media, and then I went ahead and said, hey, listen, I don't have. I'm sorry, who paraphrased this to you? I thought this one was elevated to you. When it gets elevated, it's a series of things that's getting elevated. Hey, these are things I look, there are certain times that I look and I read, I don't know what you're talking about, let me read this. There are other times where it's just like, I'm looking for X, I will briefly look at it, oh, okay, let's go. So I just want to be there. The elevation process, let's educate. On Tuesday, we sit around a room, we have open records, conversations, among many things. Once that happened, if there's an elevation process, it was, hey, here are 15 open records items that we have. Do we have this? Do we need this? Is this an exception? Do I need counsel? Do I need to research? Do I need to redact? That's how it happens. Some of which are, hey, do we have um, media non-disclosure agreements prevent staff from media? That's a paraphrase. Or, hey, this person is asking for such and such inciting the law and such and stuff. I don't. Those are ones where I'm like, hold on, wait. So I want to be very clear. Yeah, I want to be very clear, too, because I'm a little confused now. So if it gets elevated to you, that's when you talk about it in these meetings? But otherwise, you don't. If it's a standard invoice, I thought I answered it. If it's a standard invoice or something simple, it doesn't get elevated to me. It gets handled by my staff. Okay, okay. so only elevated ones get talked about in this meeting. If it, I mean, in this meeting, or hey, Dexter, I need you to look at this. I need you to weigh into this. Yes, it needs to be brought to my attention. But if you're looking for something as you have, a specific contract, if you're looking for something specific, and it, it is clear, it cannot be interpreted any differently, then yes, uh, well, my staff has full reign. So you don't personally review the request when it's elevated? It can be paraphrased. There are times where if I have a 20 open records request that needs my attention, there are some that I can go through, I will take a quick gander. There are others that will require me to, hey, I need to make a call, I need to do something, I need some consulting, I need, so there's, it's hard for me to tell you there's one way to handle a thousand open records requests in a year. Um, and other than Erica, who you've mentioned, who else is on this team? It depends. Uh, for example, if it's a big redaction project, I have to add someone. If it's a media project, I have to. So it, it, it varies based on staffing levels, workloads, and actually what I need to do. Well, you just, I mean, I, I don't want to blame the point, but you were saying that some unknown staff, and you can't identify who it is that would paraphrase this. Who else could no, 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 no. Well, okay. As it relates, I have one designated open records person, right? that what she has the authority to elevate. As it relates to handling matters, then I, because she's the only person, have the authority to say, based on the totality of circumstances, I need you to handle this redaction. Okay. I need you, you to look into this particular exemption. I need to, so let's, let's be very clear. I got one person that open records is all they do. But as you know, sometimes redactions, uh, exemptions, interpretations, those things can be out. You know. I want to try and get through the last couple um, areas. The next request I made, um, and this is at Merchant 034, in case we need to look at it, uh, was for, I specifically said, I am seeking personnel records. That's the first. Um, I, would have, I would have to look at that open records. Yep, no, oh, okay. It's um, Merchant, for the record, Merchant 0340. On January 8th, I said, I am seeking personnel records. And then I said, I'm requesting a list of attorneys with their names and date of hiring, hired by the district attorney since Ms. Willis became district attorney. And again, I stated, including the date of hire. Um, this request was clear and concise, correct? No. It was not. No. I'm seeking personnel records. I think you and I agree. What personnel records? That's a little overbroad and some. Then as it relates to the second part, I'm requesting a list of all attorneys with hiring dates, hired by the D Ms. Willis, the district attorney, Bonnie T. Willis, um, and to which I responded. 
So the first sentence, I'm seeing your personnel records. I didn't know. You didn't know what? Personnel records, that part right there. I'm asking you a question, was it clear and precise? The answer is no, based on the first sentence. I'm seeking personnel records. The second sentence, you say that you need three things. A list of attorneys, those attorneys need to have a hiring date, and that hiring date needs to be hired by uh, Fonnie T. Willis. Those, that's what you're seeking. To which I responded, I don't have responsive records. So if you did not think that this was clear, clear, did you reach out to me for clarification? No, and I won't reach out to you. Um, and I think we agree it wasn't responded to within three days. I, I don't know. I, I don't. I didn't agree to that. I'm telling you right now that I, I responded to that open records request and I said it's not. I don't have responsive records. I was asking if we agreed to that because I noticed when I was looking to see if she agreed. Right, but in fairness, the witness. Yes, didn't I know. And I was trying to finish that. that was the conversation <laughs> we had before. Uh, Ms. Monroe, did you ever have it? I know we, we decided to go ahead and get started, and it seems like it's a good thing that we did. Um, do you have any insight as to whether there can be a stipulation about whether any of the whether the responses that are that are at issue in this litigation, uh, I'm sorry, the requests that are at issue in this litigation were responded to within three days? Okay, so. The forfeiture, the request regarding the forfeiture, um, forfeiture report, that request was submitted on January 18, 18th, and a response was sent for an extension um, on that same day for five days. And then a letter, I'm sorry, and then was, a response was given um, back January 28th. So there was a response within the three days. It was just for an extension, um, but not for the provision of records. Okay. Um, so y'all can educate me uh, to the extent you need to, but my understanding is that a request for an extension of time to locate documents can suffice sometimes, but at some point there has to be production of documents within the requested time period, right? So if it's not, if it's give me a document, within three days you have to acknowledge the request and say, here you go, or we need more time to find it, which is okay, but then if you say we need five days to find it, you have to give it to them within that time you said right. for it to be time. Right. Have we followed that trail and determined if we can agree that records either were or were not provided within either the three days or the time period requested by the DA's office to comply. Okay, so as it pertains to the forfeiture reports, documents were not provided within the three days. Okay. Um, and then ultimately determined that there were no responsive records. And then in terms of the requests regarding rebranding, promotional materials, that was not in three days. Um, and in terms of, and there were also no responsive records for that. And in terms of the list of hirees, which, which she's talking about right now. Um, so yes, so that was actually responded to timely, but not with records, but with a response saying no responsive records. So we had the response that was submitted on the 8th, and then on the 9th, a letter, which is the following day, a letter was sent saying that we need seven to 10 business days to accommodate your request. I'm doing that back. I don't have a letter in front of me. Don't quote me, please. And then on the 18th, which is, which is within that 10 day uh, period, uh, it's, uh, there was a letter saying that no responsive records that was sent to the okay. requester. Okay. So out of the, sorry, I only gave, how many did I do? One, two, three. And for the final one, the NDA, the request regarding the NDA, that was not um, responded to timely, and nor were any responsive records provided within the portal under that request. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, Ms. Merchant. Thank you. Um, okay, so this was filed January 8th, um, this record, and the response was lodged January 9th that said you were in receipt of the records and to allow seven to 10 days for research. Would you agree that the response 
within three days, did not say whether or not responsive records exist, correct? Uh, I would agree with that, but it did, consistent as I read, the Open Records Act lets you know what time frame, based on staffing levels and workloads that I'm going to be able to provide you, and it reads, seven to ten business days, I need to do research. And it doesn't say whether documents will be made available. On, on the next day that you gave me this document, I, ca I could not make that determination. I needed to do research, so I outlined how long I needed to do research on 24 hours. Was it 24 hours? Uh, yeah, about 25 hours after you received that. I acknowledged your receipt and I told you I need more time. And then on January 18th, um, you responded that no responsive records exist, correct? Uh, Let's see. January 9th, I told you 7 to 10 business days. Within 7 to 10 business days, I said, hey, we don't have any responsive records. So that's correct? That is correct. And we're still referring to the personnel and records requests. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. What efforts specifically did you do to actually locate these records? Talk to my HR team, and I know for certain because HR reports to me that I do not have a list of attorneys. One, hired by district attorney Bonnie Willis. Two, with their hiring date. Those are three variables that you wanted. I know for certain and I know I know that. What searches were performed? I talked to my HR team, and then at that point I know that I do not have a list of all attorneys hired by the district attorney, Fonnie T. Willis, with the hiring date. And um, you also then received, after this, so this was on January 18th, I filed a letter on January 24th, again, asking for these documents. You received that letter, correct? I do. I, and again, that particular letter had several different open records requests that was outstanding. Um, can't remember the number. I know it was more than 12. And I think I told you the same thing I told you on the 18th, uh, that there are no responsive records. Because as I sit here today, I don't have any responsive records. My question was, you received a letter from me January 24th where I asked for these again, correct? Um, did you receive a letter January 24th? Yes. Or I asked for these again? I don't know if you asked for them again. I received the letter on January 24th. As we already said, that that letter had several different open records requests. Yes, it, this is probably included in the letter of more than 12 open records requests that I addressed from your January 24th letter. Give us a minute. Hold on. It's um, 0080. Um, for the record, it's 0080 January 24th letter, uh, I'm assuming, so direct me, uh, you're talking about section three? Section three. Yes. So I again clarified, asking if this meant that she had not hired any attorneys or that you just were claiming that there didn't, you didn't have a list, okay? Is that correct? Did you receive this? I did receive this. Okay. And before we move on, um, how many number requests are in this letter? One. You can look at the last one. Hold on, oh, wait. Well, look at this number one. You see how many is in here? So how do you want me to handle it? So each are, are one request. So if you want to look and see how many requests. Sorry, Ms. Merchant, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Here, I'll take it back and go and ask them. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I forgot. All right. Isn't it true that we go up to Roman numeral number 10 in this document? There are 10 requests in this document. Ma'am, look at number nine. That is two requests in nine. So you cannot correlate Roman numerals to request. Two requests in number nine? Look at three, four. I'm Objection. sorry. Don't know Roman numerals. Objection. I'm sorry. Um, I understand that uh, counsel is trying to get to the contents of the letter. At this point, I don't see the relevance in having, our, having the witness count the number of uh, requests in the letter. So if we could just get to it. 
Judge, part of the argument has been that it's burdensome, you know, that I requested 40 we started with. There's 10. One of them I had to duplicate because it was closed without being responsive. There's 10. Like, it, your letter, I, I can read your letter. Okay. I know how to count and read, right? And so there's no point in arguing about it. Uh, you responded to that letter and said nothing exists. Correct? In this letter, you presented 10 room and numerals that dealt with a lot of different requests that was outstanding, but you so calmly forget that we have had several different open records requests outside of that, this particular letter, dating from September. So this letter only deals with open records that was outstanding. Each room and, room and numeral deals with various different requests. Let's be clear. My question was, You've sent a letter in response to this. You you asked me that three times. The answer is yes. You received it on January 26. And it said that you do not retain records and cannot produce. And I've told you that three times because as I sit here, I do not have records. I do not have a list of hires from attorneys from with the date of hire that was hired by District Attorney Willis. I told you that on the 26th in response to the open records request. I told you that now. Yep. And I told you that previously. One point of clarification, because you, you've said the same thing several times, and you're putting emphasis on a particular part that I'm curious about. Call it the rule of judge's interest. But uh, I understand, and I think I started this hearing with this discussion about sometimes we know things that don't exist in adopt yet. But you, you keep saying I don't have a list of attorneys with their hire date who were hired by attorney Fonnie Willis, the DA Fonnie Willis. Weren't all the attorneys in the DA's office hired by Bonnie Willis? Oh, no. We, we have some DA's that was hired by District Attorney Paul Howard. Well, I'm certain, oh, they, I'm certain they have worked for the DA's office for a long, long time. Um, but didn't she decide to hire them when she became the DA? It, and and I'm, not, I'm not challenging you. I'm so. just asking to make sure I understand if there is or is not a distinction. I, I, I see that. Yeah, I can see that. But... OK. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I, but at least I understand better why you were drawing that distinction. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I was drawing that distinction because that's what she asked for. Okay. And no, I, I, got you. I got you. I wasn't challenging what it said. I was, you were placing emphasis on it in a way that to me seemed to inform how you understood the request. And now I have a better understanding of how you understood the request. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Your Honor. I will say this. Based on this particular request, what I have done is to reach out to the chief uh, human resources of the county to see if I have a list of, hey, here are the list of attorneys hired by District Attorney Willis on, with their hiring date. And I can tell you right now, as I sit here, I don't have that. When did you reach out and make that request? Doing it uh, to county HR? With don't in the course of this litigation. Okay. So not when I filed the open records request. I didn't have to at that time because I know I didn't exist. So the answer to your question is no. I didn't feel the need to reach out at that time. But then, in response to the litigation, you did feel the need to reach out and actually ask the question. Well, once you lit once once litigation is, I'm like, okay, what what can we do to resolve this matter? Is there anything extra? Let me do. I, I feel comfortable. Let's be very clear. Under the open records act, I did what exactly is required to be a law. Now, now we're in litigation. Let's see if there's anything possible else that I can do. I did that extra, and guess what? The records still don't exist. And I know we already um, verified that as an open records officer, you were charged with maintaining records under the State Records Management Act, correct? We already talked about that, right? Early on. That's part of your job. The Office of the Fulton of County District Attorneys seeks to maintain records and consistent with the State Retention Act. Okay. Yes. And that act requires that your office maintain records documenting an employee's work history in a case file, including the date they were hired and if there was no hire decision. And you have to keep those records for 50 years or seven years following the date of separation of the employee. And you're mandated to actually keep them in your own office. You can't delegate that responsibility to a central agency. So you read the retention of our law and I have not read, but I can tell you this. You started the sentence saying as it relates to personnel files. So you said case file update, right? In your open records request, you're looking for a list. I'm afraid you're misleading the court because you're convoluting a retention record that discusses personnel files, but you're seeking via the open records at a list. Those are two different things. So let's not put the list into state where retention act. They're two different things. Did you have personnel files? Go ahead. 
Did you have personnel files? Did I or do I? Yes. Both. Did you? Yes. And you did? Yes. And do those include the date that someone was hired? Yes. The personnel file should have the date that they was hired. The answer is yes. Do I have a list? No. I don't have a list. And if you think that it is reasonable for me to go look at all, find out who was hired by the DA, pull that HR file, scan that HR file to make a list, I don't think that the Open Records Act requires me to do so. So as I sit here, no, I don't have it, and I told you what I did. Did you have a question? Yep. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Um, your office also produces newsletters with lists of all of the employees of your office, is that correct? Office morale, yes. We have bi weekly newsletters, winter reports, we have quite a few. And it's got something called a directory of Just attorneys? Uh, yes, that's a directory. Okay. And so someone has to get this data somewhere with this list of attorneys, right? I don't, unfortunately, what graphics does report to me, I don't know. Uh, if they got a list of that, but I can tell you, I, I'm not, if I could, can I take a look at it again? Sure. All right. <laughs> While you're looking at that, um, I, I need to do a sort of check in with my attorneys. Um, I understood that the court reporter had made arrangements to be available until five. Um, Mr. Bowman had indicated he had an issue. Um, do we need to adjourn? Can we carry on in your absence for an hour? Can you stay? What? Where are we on that, Mr. Bowman? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can push it for for a few more minutes, but I, I mean. Um, and so, I, I'm, that's all I'm asking. Okay. I think we're comfortable concluding by five. So we're just so going to continue on at five and understood that if you need to go for your prior issue, then you're free to leave and you don't need to ask my permission, by the way. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for the interruption. While we were doing that, the witness had an opportunity to look at whatever it was that you were showing him. I saw it, but I don't know that it was ever identified for the record. I oh, I'm sorry, Judge. Um, I am showing him what is base stamp. It's um, Exhibit 8. It's Merchant 0303, and it goes until 0336. Um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let me know when, uh, if that refreshes your mind. I have reviewed this directory. I don't understand the relevance, so I'm pretty sure you'll educate me. So. Yeah. Um, this directory is published by your office, correct? Yes. Okay. And it contains, can you repeat that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Um, this is a directory published by the district attorney's office, correct? Yes. And it contains a directory, which is a list of district attorneys, essentially. This looks like my supervisor team. That. So district attorneys, yeah, supervisors, yes. Okay. And. Um, you guys publish these pretty regularly. The district attorney's office publishes these regularly. When you say publish, I, yes, I print out, I hand out. Yes, I, I've learned that staff like to see their faces places. So yes. Publish. And in this, you welcome new hires. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's a version of hey, we have some new hires. Okay. And someone gives yeah. that data to whomever makes this brochure with new hires, correct? Yes. So you're able to give a list of new hires to the promotional people? I did not say I gave a list, ma'am. Someone's able to give that data in some form, whatever form is it, to this people. We have new student orientation. They can be sitting there typing in the graphics saying, new hire Dexter Vaughn, Dexter Vaughn. So if you're telling me that a list exists, I'm telling you it does not. If you are trying to say that a list of attorneys hired by Fonnie T. Willis with the hiring date, which I don't see here exists, I'm letting you know right now that it doesn't exist. I don't know what, I don't know what correlation you have, but I see your de directory, I see it. I see this supervisory, just not a list of all attorneys, I see it. Your office pays attorneys Bardus, correct? Bardus? Mm -hmm. Yes. And they pay for continuing legal education? <laughs> so that's interesting. Do I, do I pay for the training to go to the class? Uh, typically, most cases, but you know the $12 that you have to go to the bar to say that you have the 
13 credits, now the bar, here's a $12.50 to make your account for the bar, I do not pay that. It, that. That was my inarticulate way of explaining it, but I have several different staff members who want both payments, and I'm going to do one. Let me see if I can drill down on this for a moment. Um, I don't think there's any dispute that the district attorney's office knows what attorneys work for it and probably knows somewhere when those attorneys were hired. Is that, is that fair? That's, that's fair. Ms. Merchant? I would assume so. Okay. As I understand the disagreement here is that the DA's office understood you to be asking for a list. I think I've seen something indicating their position and some case law that says they're not required to create a record in order to respond. And so I understand that you're trying to inquire about where other lists might exist. But I do want to be clear that you're not suggesting that Mr. or excuse me, that the, the defendants should have produced the personnel records of every employee that worked for every attorney that worked for the DA in response. You were asking for a list, correct? Yes. Well, and so understanding open records and, and normally, so purchasing finance, all of those divisions, when I ask for an open records, if there's some confusion about this, they talk to me. I, I understand and, all that. That that's not that's yeah. Uh, the, the only thing I'm trying to drill down on here is that you continue to ask questions about things that clearly indicate the DA knows who works for the DA. Right. I don't think that's really an issue. I understand you might be trying to get list adjacent. Oh, I'm, but I'm, I want to be clear that you're not you're not you're not saying they should have given you the personnel files. What you're trying to get to is you think there are things that might be a list that they could have produced. Is that correct? Definitely. Okay. When I worked with the public defender. There's mm -hmm. a list for barters. There's a list for CLEs. Thank you. That's what I'm asking for. Yes. The, the, the saying that these lists, you know, have existed. They have to exist to pay barters and things like that. So that's that's exactly what I'm asking. Um, all right. So. The next area was what I would consider rebranding and promotional materials. Um, on January 17th, 2024, I requested, um, and this is at Merchant 0025, for the record. Um, in that request, I requested any communications or correspondence between purchasing and the DA's office. And some of this was resolved and did not result in, in the lawsuit, but number two, the promotional materials. I requested any payments, requests for payments, hiring bids, paying vendors, promotional material, including promotional brochures, flyers, or mailers. Um, like this, promotional material. Can we agree this is promotional material? What about no? Because in my room, no, no, that is promotional. Okay, for the record, you're holding up something. I'm sorry, Can you I'm say what it is. So sorry. That's okay. Um, I am holding up what was uh, Merchant 0303, the front page of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office Winter Report 2024. Um, cool. Help me to understand. Maybe uh, I'm not trying to disagree with you, and I'm not trying to deliver a report. But what am I promoting in there? Help. Why would that be promo promotional material? Promotional material to me is, you know, our uh, reach program, helping the youth. Let's promote that. Our records restriction pro program, flyers. Let's, you know, those are things that could be considered promotional materials. I don't know. I, I wouldn't consider that promotional material. I'm not sure. Okay, so you considered reach to be promotional material. Did you provide me that in response to this open records? No, because you said in this particular open records request, any payment request process for hiring, bids, paying <laughs> vendors, promotional material include. So no, I did not. Um, Rebranding. So when you walk in the, the district attorney's office and there's there's new you know new advertisement type things, um, did you provide me any of that? No, I don't even, no, because I do not even know what rebranding is. Um, so and, and, and for the record, you remember, we just had a conversation about promotional material. As it relates to this open record request, you can uh, agree. It's just like our first one, right? It's five different things. Of those five things, I responded. I think you told the court some of this has always been resolved because some of this did not come in. You said you, That's what you testified to the court? Hey, some of this stuff did not make it to litigation. Great. All right? So we also know, once I gave you those responsive records, moved on. 
it was closed. So I gave you what I had as it relates to that. So if I did not give it to you uh, when I responded to you, no, I did not give it to you. Would you agree that this request was submitted on January 17th through the Fulton County Open Records Portal? It appears to be so, yes. And it appears also that the request was received the same day? It looks like I gave you a tracking number and it was the 17th. That's impressive for my staff, so yes, kudos. And it didn't say that whether or not responsive records exist or if they would be made available, anything like that, correct? Well, on the same day, no. I certainly didn't think that you were going to get a response on the same day. So it so, was acknowledgement of receipt, a description of your records, and a um, tracking number for you to find your records. Then on January 25th, um, you put a response in the portal that says to review attached letter and that the request had been extended for research. Is that correct? Um, it does appear that that is the letter that I gave you in January, uh, dated January 26th, I believe, um, and it looks like I needed to do some research. So I, I agree with what's being presented to me. Um, what efforts specifically did you do to locate these records? Well, I think that as it relates to these particular records, I gave you, number one, I, I, I guess, this starts with five. This, this is why things are difficult, right? You gave me five things. I responded to some. So as it relates to those particular records, I researched, retrieved records, and gave you records. You believe you gave me records in response to this? As it relates, you gave me five things in this open records request. Let's go through the first one, right? As it relates to number one, I think that you told this honorable court that some of these matters have been resolved, right? I gave you those records for number one. We can agree to that. Is that fair? As it relates to number two. No, it's not. <coughs> I received number one in regards to a subpoena in a criminal case from the county attorney's office. I did not receive that from you in regards to the direction of cost, so. Okay, we're gonna have to disagree. That's no. not So let's go through this then. This document, 0025, mm -hmm. um, the only response you sent was on January 25th where it says, please log into the portal to review the attached record. It's been extended, correct? Let's look at that letter. Yes. It's, anyway, if you can scroll up a little, it's higher up. There we go. Okay. okay. And then um, the letter that we're referencing is that same letter that you gave us earlier. It's at Merchant 0087. That deals with a whole lot of open yes. records requests. Yes. So let's go to that letter. And let's look at 011724. It's 0087. 00. Okay. And you wrote, in regards to this res request specifically, that this office does not maintain responsive records and cannot produce the records I seek. Show me. It's number five. Number five. So that's 01924. Right? Number five, 01924. Oh, so the request so you're changing you go I'm confused. So the original request is, oh, you'll go to the next page then. It's 011724. 0017, okay, you can, you can direct me. It's number eight. Uh, if that is 011724 related to promotion material rebranding, that's how I responded. Number eight, yes. So you never provided any records in regards to this response? I cannot say that because that is not my contention. You asserted to this honorable court when you started looking at this open records request that this five things, some of them have been resolved and there is no longer in this litigation. So I cannot tell you, one, two, three, four, five, what I didn't do. I will take you at your word to say that some of those things, one, two, three, four, five, was provided to you. So I'm not willing to say I gave you nothing when you have said, hey, I looked at it, some of the stuff is resolved. Do you have any knowledge as to how some of the stuff was resolved? Objection, Your Honor. So um, it's my understanding that as it pertains to this request, that the only, um, issue at hand was regarding the rebranding 
material, I'm sorry, materials regarding rebranding and promotional materials. So yeah, we Okay. So tell me, Ms. Merchant, why it, it, in response to Ms. Monroe's objection, why if, if these, some of these documents have been provided to you at some point, in some manner, through some method, why is it relevant today that they were or were not produced in response to an open records request that you served or provided to the state? It's not at all. But he said that part of them, that part of this was, was responded to, that he responded to part of it, and that's not accurate. They did not, the open records people did not respond to any of that. It has been made moot outside of that in a separate litigation, so I didn't so, include it in the lawsuit. But he is very literal with these words, and so I was trying to, like that one request is not an issue. I was trying to save time by taking that request out. But then the witness has now said, well, when we complied with it, and they have not actually ever complied with that. So that's not accurate. Okay. Um, again, I think we're, just, we're, we're, getting, we're getting bogged down in semantics. Um, the fact that the information and data or documents that were sought by plaintiffs at various points through their open records requests have now at some point been provided to them is not the same question as were they produced in response to this Open Records Act request, and if so, when? Uh, and so to the extent that's the conversation we're trying to have, that's allowable. And with that clarification, please go ahead. Thank you. And I'm trying to be clear. I, I, so in regards to this request, what did you do to actually locate any records? I uh, received that particular open record request. I went through it. I, I, I cannot tell you if this particular request was elevated to me. Let me. I do know that I do not know what rebranding is. I do not know that I do not know what promotional material is. I do know that I responded to that. Um, I cannot speak generally about this, specifically about this open records request, but I would have done to this request what I have done in all. Did you ask for any clarification if you did not understand what the term remote promotional material or rebranding meant? I will not, I've said this to the record and I'm gonna repeat this again. I'm not having a private conversation with you, Ms. Ashley Merchant. So no, I would not contact you. I am not going to email you. I am not going to talk to you to look at any clarification. I find you to be extremely disingenuous, so I won't talk to you. And clarifications don't require me to reach out to you. What it does for the open records request is require you to put me in a reasonably calculated situation to give you what you had. But let's be clear. If you think that I'm going to reach out to you and talk to you, I'm not. The fourth request, critical mention. Any payments, requests for payments, bids, or paying of critical mention? Did you do anything in regards to that request? So we talked about critical mention. That because I had to ask for it a third time. And so in regards to the third request, where I asked for the same check that we now have gotten from critical mention, but not from you, did you do anything? So I'm going to repeat this for the third time. The critical mention came in on January 8th. On January 18th, I gave you 44 pages. On January 19th, you renewed the request. Again, the real first request had five different things. On January 19th, you only elevated one thing. I assumed on January 8th, on January 18th, you got everything. Because when you don't have something, you elevated that one issue. I then worked to work on that one issue that was elevated. So to answer your question for the third time, no, I did not give you anything on January 18th. I assumed that the records was responsive and they were complete. You gave no records in response to this request. Not According correct. to number eight, I said the Office of the Fulton County District Attorney in its normal course of business does not maintain responsive records as such. We cannot produce the records you seek. Number eight. I asked you what you did to locate the records to give me that answer. Mm -hmm. Who did you ask for records, if anybody, to give me that answer? Let's go back to, uh, let's go back. Who did you ask, if anybody? I have to see the request. Give me that this request was five different things. So if you, again, 1,000 requests, right? What we have discovered right here is all your requests came in from September and a lot came in in January, right? So in this particular January, I have to go back to it to tell you what I did on these five open records requests. So if you can put those things back on the court, I can tell you. Well, I'm not asking about five. I'm asking about number eight. It's, in, it's, it's open records number eight. That's the only one I'm asking. Gotcha. 
So we can agree that number eight corresponds to your open records request. Your open records request seeks five things. If you can put those five things on the screen, I can answer your question as to relate what I did for one, two, three, four, five. Okay. I can make two easy five. as it relates to branding and promotional. I don't even know what you're talking about. So I told you, let's move on. Merchant 0025. Number one, outside counsel. That was a. I'm oh. not asking you about that, so we can move on. I haven't That's asked you about that. Okay. But um, in regards to number two, I know you said you don't know what promotional material means, but what, if anything, did you do in response to try to find responsive documents for this? Uh, can I tell you what I did specifically? That's a conversation uh, with staff because my POV may be limited. What are promotional materials? I don't know. So I don't, I don't know what I did specifically. I don't know what. But what I did do is say that I do not have any process for hiring and bids for paying vendors for promotional material. I don't have that. Number three, rebranding. Any payments, requests for payments, process for hiring bids and paying vendors for rebranding material. Did you do anything in response to this request? I, as, a per, as a CEO of the office, I know about bidding and I know that there is no hiring or bids related to rebranding, period. Uh, as to certain things, and then as it relates to rebranding specifically, I don't know what that is. Did you do anything in regards to this request? I've reviewed it, I accepted it, and consistent with the Open Records Act, I gave you a tracking number and I responded to it. So yes, me or my staff did something to this. Did you do any searches or request any records in regards to this? As it relates, I'm going to say yes. You don't want to talk about number one, but I'm pretty sure that I did a search because you have those responsive records. As it relates to number two, promotional material, I told you I do not have process of hiring bids. It doesn't require me to do research on that. As a COO of the office, I know the answer to that question. As it relates to rebranding, I think the court and I can all agree, right? that this particular matter, I don't know what that is. As it relates to critical mention, I have discussed several times uh, what my position is as it relates to critical mention. And as it relates to TBI, I did respond. There is no response to records to that. So did I do something? Yes, I responded in compliance with the Open Records Act. That's what I did. So my question was, what did you actually do to locate the records? Did you perform any searches? There were no searches to perform outside of number one. So I'm pretty sure I did a search for number one. As right. it relates to number two, there's no search because there's no process for hiring bids for promotional material. So, so tell us three, what you did in, in regards to number one then, since you brought it up. Uh, what I would do with any payments, because you requested a lot of payments, right, in previous open records. You requested a lot of contracts. That is something that I can pull as it relates to AMS and provide to you. So in regards to number one, can you tell us what you did? Again, Your Honor, this is outside of the scope of what's, what open record requests are at contention here. If we could just focus on the open record requests or the, the materials that are missing and that have not been provided. Judge, I think it, you deserve an answer, though, that nothing was done. Hang on. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you the time and trouble of making that argument and, and say, I agree with you that what he provided in response to this request isn't relevant, but the process that he followed, the effort that he made to respond to it versus others, or in a similar way as he made, as a process he followed to respond to others, I think is relevant, and so I'm gonna let him answer the question. Your objections are ruled. Repeat the question, please. In regards to request number one, outside counsel, I requested any payment, request for payment, process for hiring bids, paying outside counsel, including the reference retraining, which was discussed during the Board of County Commissioners meeting in November 2023. You'll remember you appeared in front of them. There was a big discussion about this. What did you do in response to that open records, number one? I cannot recall specifically. I cannot recall. Do you recall if you did anything in regards to this? I can speak generally what I would have done. I cannot recall specifically as it relates to this request. So how can you tell us that it's been fulfilled then if you don't know what you did? Because as it relates to outside counsel, I cannot specifically tell you what I've done. Generally, for payments, 
I would have looked to see if there are any outside vendors, which I, which is which you have asked me for via open records request, and I have supplied to you responsive records to this. So I don't know how to answer your question, and I cannot specifically talk about tracking number one one seven two four. What did you do to search for? information about the retraining that was required during the Board of County Commissioners meeting. And it, that, you, do you remember attending the Board of County Commissioners meeting in November 2023? I do. And you remember there was a big discussion about the DA's budget for things, um, printing, promotional material, things like that. That's not how it was reframed, but I do remember that I, I was present and I represented the office at that BLC meeting. And the purchasing department had some concerns because you had quite a few outstanding debts or I'm sorry, payments. What department? The purchasing. Purchasing. Thing. Sorry. That's had concerns about um, all the spending for promotional material. That is not that's a mischaracterization of the purchasing department. Okay, I don't want to get down into the weeds of what because also there's an official record of what went down at the BFC meeting on whatever day, and if it ever becomes relevant, I can find it and listen to it and know what was said. Um, so let's go. Yes. Okay. What is relevant is what did you do in regards to when I asked for the communication that was referenced at that meeting? Purchasing said they were going, they had gotten with you on retraining your office about purchasing. I asked for that communication. It was referenced during that meeting. What did you do to find that? That particular training was done by me and the CFO. It was a conversation between me and her. So there is no documents related to that particular training. It was done via Zoom. So that, that's all. I, I, again, I cannot tell you specifically what I did with this open records request. If the conversation is about this particular training, I can tell you what it was. I can tell you that your statement of the purchase department is mischaracterized, and I can tell you that there are no records related because that happened via Zoom and we had a conversation about how to proceed forward. So you did nothing in regards to looking for correspondence about that, setting up that Zoom or anything like that? I, I, I know I would not set up the Zoom, so I, no, no. Okay. Um, let's move on to the forfeiture reports. Um, so on January 16th, this is at Merchant 0019. January 16th, I requested reports and itemization for all property and funds obtained through forfeiture. If you can. Uh, don't recall the characterization of that open records request. If you can allow me to see it, I will definitely bring it up to speed. Yes, for me. Okay. And um, this was submitted through the open records portal? Yes, it appears it was submitted January 16th. Good job, staff. They responded. They gave you a tracking number on January 16th. And the response for the request was clear and concise, correct? Actually, no, it was not. Okay. Uh, so you didn't understand what I was requesting here? Uh, no, I didn't. I communicated that to you. You communicated that. How did you do that? January 26th letter. You communicated that you didn't understand what I was requesting? Uh, if you can pull up the January 26th letter, I can reference what you're saying. Sure. I'm going to Do you have a physical copy of that letter you can give the witness with reference to the map yeah. that having to stop and pull it up each time is... Thank you. Thank you. So before you go any further, is this the first time you responded to me in regards to this forfeiture request? No. Okay, well you said, so you said that what I was asking for was not clear and concise. That's correct. So, and I told you that I told you that, and you gave me this letter, and I'm about to tell you what I communicated. Is that fair? So you're gonna tell me where you told me it was not clear and concise? Yes, do you want me to tell you? That'd be Let's look at the letter, January 26. I'm going to direct your eyes to footnote number one. Footnote number one reads, we believe, emphasis on we believe, you are seeking the office's equitable sharing agreement and certificate. These records were filed in accordance with law, state and federal law. And I want you to, let's go back up to number six, because you're talking about 011624. I say to you, responsive records are attached. So in this particular letter dated January 26, I respond to your open records request number six. I let you know that these records are attached. I give you a footnote, and that footnote lets you know we believe. And if I can, don't want to talk too much, but let me tell you why I believe what I believed. You want me to go there? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm, 
if there's something that's relevant to this, but I mean, this is the only re this is the only response that you're saying you have, right? For number one, yes, as it relates to the office's equitable sharing agreement and what I believe that you're looking for, uh, and I can tell you what I did to give you that. Oh, okay, yes, that's that would be my next question. Um, well, that's, that's something I had. Give me one one minute to get there. Um, so. This response, so this one that you sent, and I don't have the date, you've got my copy. Um, it was sent, I believe, January 26th, correct? Yes, January 26th. Okay. Um, can you pull up Merchant 0018? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. So after that, on January 28th, we received something that says apologize for the delay. So after we received this letter, there was a, an apology for the delay and said that it was still pending. Uh, I'm looking at, what date, January 28th? January 28th. January 28th, it reads, this school respondents in response to our uh, response. We apologize for they have additional time we need to fulfill your request. Uh, January 28th, yes, it does appear that, if I can, on January 29th, it says, all responsive documents were emailed to you on January 26, 2024. So, I'm trying to take it one step at a time. Understood. My question is, on January 28th, two days after your letter, there was an open records response that said they apologized, that they needed more time, and that it was still pending, correct? That is correct. Okay. So it then, appears to be, yes. All right. Then after that, on January 29th, I received another response that said responsive documents were emailed to me. Uh, on January 29th, and then it, it says it was emailed to you on January 26th prior. If I met, uh, that was on, on about where the cyber attack was. So an effort to communicate to my staff, uh, to all requesters, including you and a thousand others, we wanted to make sure that everyone has a response that things have changed. So to me, you got a letter on January 18th. I responded to you via email on January 26th. My staff went around this time. Hey, let me tell everybody that there is going to be a delay because I don't know what's going on with the cyber attack. On January 29th, it was all responsive documents were mailed to you on January 26th. So I want to clear up that. Yes, that's where I was trying to get at. So at that point, you all, all you had given me was the equitable sharing summary, and you were saying that's all you have. That's all the responsive documents, correct? Based on your open records request, that was all the, uh, that's the all the documents. That's correct. What efforts specifically did you do to locate the records I requested? Oh, that was I didn't know what you were talking about, but you said that this was filed with the county and local governing authority. So because it was filed with the uh, county and local governing authority, I called the clerk. I said, hey, clerk. Is there anything related to this particular account that I particularly found? So hold on, so you contacted the clerk in regards to this response? Yeah, I, I contacted the clerk of court. the clerk of court? C clerk of BOC, I'm so sorry. That's okay, thank you. Uh, the clerk of who? B Board of Commission. You said that I had filed with the Fulton County, a local governing authority. So because I'm taking you at your word, if this is something that I had filed with them, I call it the clerk of the Board of Commission. I'm so sorry to say, hey, is there something that I filed with the clerk of the commission? So when did you do that? When did you contact the clerk? Probably in, in, any time between January 24th and January 26th when I responded to your letter, because I had to get the copy to provide to you on the January 26th letter. And you spoke with the actual clerk? I can add a call. Was it by phone or was it by email? Okay. Did you use a county phone? I can't remember. Were you in your office when you made that call? Uh, I can't remember. Was it a woman or a man? You had an objection. Uh, the answer was you check with the clerk. That should be it. What is the relevance of the gender of the clerk? This is irrelevant. And it's, it's argumentative. Okay. I understand what you're trying to do about what maybe refreshes memory about who he spoke to, but you've made your point. Let's move on. I'm trying to find out who it is so I can ask them if they spoke. That's, I mean, that's the only way I can ask that. Um, but I'm going. So you talked with someone at the clerk and they said they don't have anything in regards to forfeitures? That's not what they said. I said, hey, based on your request, right? Mm -hmm. You said that you can, can we pull up your request so we can read it verbatim? For What's the, up? Okay, sorry, glasses off. Can we go down? I'm sorry. It says, reports and itemizations that were required by law 
to be submitted to the county as a local governing authority showing what was done with all property and funds obtained through forfeiture, including but not limited to reports showing the funds went and who was paid out of funds. That's what you had. That's what you did. What did I do? I called the clerk of court. I said, is there a report, clerk of commission, I'm sorry, clerk of board of commission, is there something that I file that deals with property and or funds related to forfeiture? They gave me the equitable sharing agreement. I respond, gave it to you. In footnote one, I said, we believe you are seeking the office's equitable sharing agreement and certificate. These records were filed. Again, I say responsive records are attached. Who gave you the equitable sharing agreement? I can't remember. I know who I called. Um, I don't know her, who uh, responded. I don't know, but I, I recognize that this was something that was filed with the local government authority. Uh, it dealt with property. It dealt with forfeiture. I sent it to you for your charge. I do know that. And did they send it to you by email? I can't remember. Um, were any other searches performed? No, because I, at, at the time I gave you exactly what you was looking for. You looked for uh, reports and itemization filed with the local government authority. I called the county. I said, is there anything filed with this property and seizure? They said it's the equitable sharing agreement. Oh, here we are, responsive. Here you are, free of charge. Item number six, address closed. That's so right. no other searches. You did no other searches? No, no, no. So you didn't, um, you didn't obtain the document that you filed, um, that you also had to file talking about, the, the equitable sharing is the federal one. There's also a state one for state forfeiture funds. Did you file it? Did you search for anything in regards to that? The, you educated me. Say it one more time. There's a federal forfeiture law and a state forfeiture law. You have to file reports for both. Did you say that in the open records request? Did I tell you that you had to file reports for both? No. no. You're distinguishing state versus federal, right? No. You said you gave me the equitable sharing. Equitable sharing is a federal Department of Justice document. There's also a PAC document for okay. forfeiture. Two different funds, two different tracking. Receive. Did you give me anything about the state tracking? No. You gave me the federal equitable fund. Because that's what you asked for. You said, give me the documents that was submitted to the county, Fulton County, as the local government authority. They're so both we submitted to the county. My question is, you gave me the ones, the federal forms. Did I'm you do any searches for the state forms? that you are required to do for the county? No, I did not. What I did do was call the clerk. The clerk said, I have a forfeiture account based, your open record says local government authority showing what was done with property and funds it, to forfeiture. It makes no mention of the distinction that you're drawing today. What you're drawing today is completely different. What I did say is say, hey, I have a point of reference, local governor authority. Let me call the local governor authority. They say, I do have something through forfeiture. I get it, it's, it's responsive. I say in my footnote, we believe you're seeking this. Okay, my question is, did you do any searches looking for the state documents? Any searches? No. Okay, can you pull up merchant 0571? But why would I? No, the answer is no. And I would not have done that because you said filed with the county. So why would I then say, hey, I filed with this county, but maybe she wants to look for the state. I do not, you and I don't think alike, clearly. Okay, let's back up for a second. Mm -hmm. The federal forfeiture statute requires you to do a document called equitable sharing. This news to me. You file it every year as part of your job. Objection, Your Honor. Um, it, I'm sorry. Assuming facts is not in the evidence and is also. It's in evidence. Ms. Murray. Let her give her objection. Um, yes. That is my objection. I'm sorry. Because of the crosstalk, I understood. Is your objection is facts not in evidence? Is it's, that your objection? It, it's not in evidence. Well, it assumes a fact that is not yet in evidence, in evidence that he filed this every year. Okay. So, um, I don't really think there's a dispute that the DA's office actually files this document every year because they do, but... But whether or not he filed it every year. I, I, that was, 
I was going to agree with you, right? That, that whether he has any knowledge of the DA's office's compliance and requirement to do so, I have no idea. But what I am going to back up to is I, I, I think you've asked, and he's answered multiple times, what effort he made to comply with that request. And I think his testimony is that he reached out to the clerk of the Board of Commissioners and they shared with him information about this equitable sharing agreement. And he believed that was responsive to your request, and so he identified it, produced it to you, and that was the end of what he believed was his response. That's what I understand to be the testimony at this point, um, and let's move on from there. If you look at the um, Merchant Zero Five.